Welcome to this week's Knowledge Nibble, where we will be having a look at core stability and postural control. Now, first of all, we need to clarify what is stability and what is strength. So we will have some example exercises that I will show you with horses and dogs coming up. Um, but first of all, we need to get in our mind clear what is a stability or what is stability, what is a stability exercise and what is a strength exercise. Because this is very commonly um, confused. And, you know, I have seen people develop programs where they've gone straight into a strengthening exercise and they've um, put that on top of what is a wobbly uh, body. Um, and the way we need to attack this is to induce stability first and build strength on top of that. OK, so it's quite important that you can look at the different exercises that you're prescribing and you can understand whether they um, whether they're more lean towards being a stability exercise or more lean towards being a strength exercise. Um, and the reason I put it like that is because it's not always clear cut. You can't just say all, all of these exercises are stability, but they don't um, do anything for strength or all of these are strength, but don't do anything for stability. That's not the real world. But when we're trying to prescribe exercises and we're trying to work out when we should progress them or when we should regress them, it's important for us to understand what exercises target stability and what would be more towards targeting strength. So just looking at these two images here, so this image on the left would be more towards a stability exercise. OK, so what this is, what a stability exercise is and why it's important is we need stability of our postural and our control muscles, our postural control muscles and our core muscles. We need them to be switched on, if you like. And their job is to hold things in the right place and to help you control your trunk and control your limb movements without everything sort of hinging and relying on each other. OK, so core strength and postural stability or postural control um, are very important um, elements. And firstly, before we can build on a lot of strength, we need to get that foundation right. So when we talk when we talk about our method of rehabilitation or our method and strength of strength and conditioning, which is our Corex method, we discuss building an animal from the foundations up. So we need to get the foundations in place and then we build on top. So our stability exercises and our postural control exercises, they are our foundations. So in a stability exercise, you won't be moving. Um, or the part that you're trying to stabilise won't be moving. So, for example, this is and these are isometric exercises. OK, so there's no concentric contraction, no eccentric contraction. It's an isometric contraction. And an isometric contraction is when you when the muscle holds a position. So it's not lengthening. It's not shortening. It's just holding. And these are the really fundamental basis exercise of, of strength and conditioning. One of you, any of your patients. Uh, when you've had any sort of injury, particularly shown in back injuries um, in the literature, you will have some, uh, after that, you'll have some postural control issues. Or it's shown that there are postural control or core stability issues after injury. Now, it may well be that those um, instabilities were already there and that's why you had an injury. But it's very common, let's just say for a patient that's been injured to have stability issues okay so it's really key that we work on this uh, quite quickly so this so like i say an isometric exercise a stability exercise will just hold yourself in place now obviously this lady's had to get herself in this position and she's used different types of muscle contraction to get there um, and if she were to say this particular pose is um, standing still but if she were now to say move her arms um, up and down or you know side to side or out in front of her it would still be an isometric contraction because or it'd still be a stability exercise because the trunk would be a core stability exercise now because the trunk itself is in isometric contraction and there'd be postural control because the trunk will be uh aiming to be stable, hold the spine aligned whilst you're moving your arms around and, and providing some instability. OK, so that's very important. We don't want that every time we lean forward to pick something up 
um, or every time we reach up to get something, we don't want to get problems with our back um, and things like that. And that's because if our core is uh, weak and we don't have good core stability, when we lean forward, you know, we our trunk becomes vulnerable. Whereas if our trunk and our core is strong and we have good postural stability in our legs and around our joints, our arms can move forward independently of our trunk um, and we don't have that vulnerability. So that's why it's very important. So these exercises here on the right. Um, <clears throat> so this is a sit up, obviously, you can see they're going from a laying position to a sit up position or crunch, whatever you might like to call it. And so this would be a strength exercise. Now, this exercise particularly is for the core because you're working the abdominal muscles here. Uh, when this gentleman is moving forward um, into the upward position, he's going to be using concentric contraction of his abs. Um, if he just flops backwards, um, if he had a cushion behind him and he just flopped backwards, then he wouldn't use a lot of eccentric contraction. But if he um, if he lowers himself down slowly, not right down to the floor, and then goes into a crunch again, he's going to be using concentric contraction on the way up, eccentric contraction on the way down. And if he were to hold himself halfway down and just stay there, then that's going to be isometric. So you can see that there's a little bit of obviously stability within this exercise, but it's mainly a strength exercise. The idea of it would be to build muscle mass. Okay, so just going back, just to reinforce what I just said um, about the foundations, this is our quadex matrix, and we would be, with these stability and postural control exercises, we're in and around the first quadrant um, of the strength and conditioning process, which is to engage uh, where we're stabilizing, we're rebalancing, and we're trying to recruit correct motor patterns. We're trying to, um, with this, this in this stage, we're looking at movement quality training. Okay, so we're trying to train a quality movement. So let's just have a look at some exercises then. Um, we're, when we're looking at horses and dogs, we can consider core engagement. Um, again, these exercises will overlap a little bit and have some strength element to them. Um, but they are, in fact, core stability exercises. Sort of, um, the, the majority of what they do is a stabilizing movement. So there have been, there's been research into horses um, where dynamic mobilization exercises, which this is one of, um, have been shown to increase the cross-sectional area of multifidus, which is a, a key spinal stabiliser. These studies have also been done in humans. Um, and if multifidus is not switched on and doing its job, it causes all sorts of problems, which is, would be for another knowledge nibble. We don't have time to cover that in detail today. But as we just discussed there, it's very important that these core muscles or these postural, these stability muscles um, are engaged. So either with horses or dogs. This little dog here is doing a cookie stretch, what would be known as a cookie stretch, um, and he's moving his head. So by using the head as a lever, very much like I just said about the lady in the tree pose, if she were to stand still and move her arms, the core is having to engage, basically to stop you stop me falling over. Um, that's what it's there for, to stop you falling over. So that's it. Will, uh, every time you make these movements with the head and neck of the animal, you're engaging that core, you're engaging those postural stability and those spinal stability muscles, um, and you're awakening those, um, and you're um, encouraging this stability from, from these exercises. So these exercises in horses are known as dynamic mobilization exercises, and there's a series of exercises that really every horse should be doing or have a, a course of doing um, between uh, uh, three to five times a week. So, and the same theory can be passed over to dogs for core uh, core engagement. So then just moving on to look at postural stability. Um, again, these are all, they're all, there's an overlap to all of these. So we put them in sections so that it makes us easier to select exercises and understand progression. But really there's quite a lot of over, overlap between the exercises. This is just then another example of postural stability. 
And although this will engage the core somewhat, um, you will be getting uh, postural stability of the limb joints, um, which is also very important. So we ha if we have that stability and that correct motor control around the joints, we're going to reduce the incident of injury, which is obviously what we want to do. Um, so this little dog on the left, I'm going to show you these videos in a moment, but um, we, if we have weight shifting exercises or destabilizing, this is a harder destabilizing exercise, we can make them harder um, by putting the horse or dog on an unstable surface. Um, so if you do this on hard ground, it's less challenging, just shifting from left to right. If you do it on an unstable surface, um, then it's going to make it more difficult. And then all of these exercises can be progressed. Um, there's lots of ways in which you can progress exercises. So you have your standard set of exercises, but depending on how the animal copes or whether you think they need more challenge, then you can obviously progress them to make them more difficult and more challenging and therefore um, provide extra stimulus for even more stability and start to move into strength then when you can build on top of that nice, secure foundation and start building some real strength on top of that so what i'm just going to do now is just pop over and show you <coughs> um, a couple of videos so of these uh, movements that we've just seen so this is um uh, or the uh draft of our exercise video pro software which will be ready um in a couple of weeks for um people to use to prescribe exercise um, keep an eye out for that that will be on our website and i will obviously let you know as well through the knowledge nibbles when it's ready um, but this is just um, some of the exercises that you can put into a um, exercise plan for a patient for example so just looking at those exercise exercises that we have just looked at quickly for horses and dogs um, this would be a dynamic one of the dynamic mobilization exercises and you can see there that by putting the horse off balance um, and into that position, we're getting core engagement. Unfortunately, I'm in the way there a little bit, but you will see if you were there that this, you would have the abdominals um, really engaging and you have a nice, this horse has a nice movement through his back. So one thing I do want to say that's very important is that, and this is really why you need to have a full understanding of the exercises and the functional uh, stimulus that they provide it's very important that you have that understanding because we don't want to do these exercises wrong we have to focus very much on um, the postural control of the animal we need to be looking at whether they're cheating using cheat strategies we need to ensure that we're providing a functional stimulus and not something that a is going to be no use to them but b could potentially be damaging if you reinforce um, a, 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 an incorrect movement pattern so it's very important that you have that understanding. But this would be a forelimb destabilization exercise on a balance plaid. So this is quite a challenging exercise. Um, we're not up very close to this horse. Let me just do this again. Um, you can see that it becomes a little bit of a challenge in a, a couple of times. Let's just pay that through once more. Um, might not be clear to see, but you're getting good pectoral engagement here. But Every now and then, he's a little bit, whoa, that's a bit wobbly. I can't quite do that. So it's quite a challenge for him. Um, obviously, we always want to be safe. Um, but that by challenging him, by effectively trying to push him gently off balance and making him write that, um, write that balance sort of um, challenge, that's causing him to engage those postural stability muscles which are exactly the ones we want to target and then just finally quickly this one before we look at the the um doggy ones so this is a very challenging exercise also for the handler <laughs> so for any of you that are working with horses you need to get pretty strong to be doing this so that's obviously a more advanced bit of a cross between a, a core exercise a destabilizing exercise um, and so we can get a bit clever and more advanced with those. Let's just have a look at the um, <coughs> examples that I've got here for canine. So this would be the little guy with the cookie stretch. Now looking at his posture, I would want to write that a little bit and be trying to just correct this posture and just make it a little bit better if we could. Um, but he's 
doing all the moves that you should be doing. And again, using a bait is a good way to get them to make these different movements. I mean, the, the studies have been done with the rounding movements and this particular movements, but really anything where you're moving um, the head and neck into a different position, you're going to get that stimulus, which is what we're after. And then we can see this one. It's a very simple exercise, but it's made more difficult by just placing the dog onto a mattress. And this is very good for engaging all those hind limb muscles, particularly. And then just finally, we again, we can make these more challenging, a bit easier with dogs because there's a lot more equipment that we can use. Um, obviously, we can't do this sort of thing with a horse all very easily anyway, but um, we can manipulate them a little bit more to, to give them a bit more stimulus and make it more challenging. Okay, so your actions for this week then are I'd like you to select one of those exercises. I would like you to study the correct functional movement associated with that exercise. So have a look at your anatomy, have a look at the functional movement, how they should move in all parts of their body, not just the piece that you're moving. Um, and really concentrate on that rather than just try to get an animal to do an exercise. Really concentrate on how they're actually doing it. And then I'd like you to have a go. I'd just like to say one caveat to that, you know, uh, make sure that your animal isn't, doesn't have a condition, the one that you're practicing with, um, and that they're nice and comfortable, happy animals, and that they've been checked out recently by a vet. But I'd like you to have a go at one of those exercises this week and challenge yourself. Okay, if you're not signed up to Knowledge Nibbles and you'd like to be, please go over to our website at animalrehabhealth.academy forward slash knowledge where you can sign up. See you next week.